Uh, coming towards the end now, but there's one or two more questions we'll, we'll get through. Um, and I know we're gone over time, but of course we started a bit late, but if you, if you have to leave, of course, uh, feel free. Uh, feedback. Candidates are always given that they don't get enough feedback. Where do you stand in terms of you know, feedback that's given on psychometric assessment? Uh, Sinead, could you manage that? Um, so I definitely believe that as employers, if somebody has given their time to, like our application in Jemison, if you're familiar with it, was like a two minute video, uh, a written application. Um, so that's, that's quite uh, time intensive. Um, and to get to assessment center like there's three assessments that uh, they, that they did as well a lot of prep for that so if people put in that level of time then of course they deserve some form of feedback okay but employers sometimes don't have the resource or the funding or the mechanism to do that uh we were on as well <laughs> um to make sure that we uh did provide feedback but it was to candidates who attended assessment um, so for those and anybody who uh, applied and wanted feedback, we were happy to have a call with them uh, because that was the, the the most valuable means of communication as opposed to an email. Anybody then who came to assessment center, all of them got feedback uh, in written form, and then the offer for a phone call as well. It's amazing how few people take up that offer of a phone call. And when a, an employer says that we're happy to have a call, they mean it. They wouldn't offer unless they actually meant it. Um, so I think. You know, working with students as you do, if an employer opens that door and makes that offer, then if they really want to know, you know, why didn't they get the role or why did they progress, then they should take up the offer of a call. But a feedback on psychometric testing in, in particular uh, is it, it's, it's an interesting area because my view is that uh, if you are to give people a report with no context as to what that report means and these people, graduates, are not um, educated in how to read psychometrics, then that's not of value. So where we, so when I worked in the bank, what we did was there, we actually gave people psychometrics, uh, but it was one feedback. So whether you got hired or you uh, didn't get hired, you weren't successful. You all got feedback if you asked for it. If the offer was there again, then you got individual feedback on it. And someone sat with you either over the phone or in person and went through the psychometric report with you. Because if you're given the report, and we've all done psychometrics, I'm sure, in this room, if you're given that report without context or training, then it's very difficult. You always look at the negative and you won't weigh that or balance that out with the positive. Um, and that's where I think uh, when feedback is given, about psychometrics in particular, it should be something that's quite individual uh, feedback as opposed to just a report that you're meant to interpret yourself. Right. Well, it's good to see that, uh, at least for in some cases, we have employers here who are able to offer it. Because I think a lot of students perceive that it's just, you know, they complete the psychometric and that's the last they'll ever hear on it. Fulton, wh where do you stand on this in terms of feedback? From now, We're talking about recruitment now. Yeah, um, yeah I, th I think as if someone's going to make the effort and get on your company, they made that investment, then I think it, it depends on what stage of the recruitment process, I suppose. I think they are entitled to get feedback. Um, I had an interesting case a couple of years ago of a guy who asked me to do psychometric tests with him, who was looking to change career and he was trying to get preparation and I suppose, advice on what, what area of career he, or what, what new career he should start. But he did personality profiling and he did cognitive ability tests with me. And when he got the results, when he went through the profile, I could see that he was a bit crazy. And he was disappointed with the cognitive outcome because they were lower than he thought they were going to be. So, and th th this, is a, th this is important in terms of context. So I asked, okay, take me through the, the profile. When did you do it? When did you do the assessment? So I did it two weeks ago while I was watching the Champions League match. So straight away, his profile is not avoid because he wasn't concentrating. And if you're not concentrating, like any test, like any exam, that will show up in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the feedback. And oftentimes, someone isn't concentrating. They're doing personality when they're distracted and they send the answers really quickly, and then they're surprised they see the profile. Or it's the same with cognitive ability. They can say, well, I was always really good at reasoning only in the 52nd percentile. So, well, take me through the assessment. And they said, oh, I did it on the bus with the lads or things like that. So it, feedback is very, very healthy. When it's going to test their time to try and get a job with you, if possible, you should certainly offer feedback. It's very helpful, particularly if, if you can find out something like that that the person didn't prepare properly for, for yes. the actual assessment. So I suppose it is the professional then who can give that. Yeah. He, that and it's really important candidate. that feedback is given by someone who knows what they're talking about yes. because the difference between scores on cognitive ability tests and scores on personality tests is a huge difference. Actually. Um, so someone has to be trained when they're giving feedback. Yeah. Very good. All right. We're coming towards the end. I'm going to 